If you want to know more about the new Arrow Lake chips, check out my other video linked in the cards, otherwise let's get straight into this. This is Intel's new Core Ultra 7 265K, a 20-core, 20 20-thread 20 chip that lacks hyperthreading, but gains a tiled layout, an AI accelerator, and most importantly, newly designed performance and efficiency cores, all made with the help of TSMC a first for Intel's mainline desktop chips. In this video, I'm doing something a little different. Considering all of the big channels you'll likely get notifications for first, we'll be thoroughly testing these things against its rivals. I thought I'd do some practical testing with memory speeds, especially since the new CU DIMM standard is here. Video in the cards above for that one too. Now, I don't have any crazy high clock speed kits as of yet, although do get subscribed if you want to see me test that sort of thing here too, but I do have a 6400 CL38 kit and the crucial CU DIMM 6400 CL52 kit, with the 6400 uh, sort of standard kit having a secondary XMP profile that runs at 6000 megatransfers per second, but at a lower CL36 latency. So I think that should be a, a pretty interesting look at how both clock speeds and latency affect the performance. I'm also going to throw in 5600 at that CL36 as well. I'm also using an Acer RX 7800 XT for testing here, partially because I think it's a pretty realistic card to pair with an i7 or U7 class chip, and because it's pretty much the highest end card I have access to right now. Right, that's the preamble, let's look at some results. I won't spend long on the productivity results, but there are some interesting things, so let's take a look, starting at Cinebench R23. In single-threaded work, it seems like the latency is the biggest factor, as the slowest result was the CU DIMM CL52 sticks, then the CL38 6400 profile, which tied with the 5600 CL36 mode, uh, showing the trade-off between latency and frequency pretty nicely. In multi-threaded though, it's pretty clear that a victory for frequency, with the catch that the latency will still have an effect as the CL, uh, the 6400 CL38 is the fastest, then a drop to the CU DIMM modules with their considerably slower latency, and then the 6000 CL36. In Blender, there's a massive difference between 5600 and 6000, which I found pretty surprising, at least in the Gooseberry render anyway. Only the 6400 CL38 dropped a second off of the BMW render, and 10 seconds off of the Gooseberry render. Interestingly, the 6000 CL36 and 6400 CL52 are basically tied, again showing the trade-off between frequency and latency pretty nicely. Oh, and you'll be happy to know that these things aren't nuclear reactors when it comes to heat anymore. At least with a 360mm AIO and the default 250 watt power limit in place, even under full load, the chip ran at around 70 degrees Celsius with a peak of 75C. If this were a 14700K, this would be on fire by now. I'm sorry, I mean 90 degrees Celsius or higher. As for gaming, I did test at both 1080p and 1440p, but 4040p really just squashes all of the interesting effects, so I'll stick with 1080p for now. CS2 seems to really like frequency, because both 6400 kits lead to the rest, despite the dreadful timings on the CU DIMM kit. The difference isn't massive, save for the 5600 runs, although we are still only talking about 6.4% from best to worst, so not a massive deal in the grand scheme of things, especially since we're talking about like 400 FPS and you know 20 FPS here or there isn't exactly much. Cyberpunk, on the other hand, seems a bit more conventional, with the balance of timings and frequency being the best mix. The 6400 CL38 kit did the best, only by 1 FPS in both average and 1% lows, mind you, with the CU DIMM kit trailing behind at 6 FPS back from the lead. There isn't much in this, just 3.6% from best to worst, so realistically you can use any of these kits and still be pretty happy with their performance, although if you do want the best, a low latency, high speed kit 
is your best bet. Shadow of the Tomb Raider shows the same trend, although this time with a touch more spread. The CU DIM comes up last with 219 FPS versus the OC kit running at 230, or a 4.9% gap. Interestingly, the 1% lows equally suffer with 154 FPS on the CU DIM kit, 168 FPS on the OC kit. That's actually an appreciable difference that you might feel in games. The difference between 6400 and 6000, especially with those tighter timings, isn't anywhere near as big. It's a 4 FPS gap, and interestingly, even at 5600, there's very little performance drop, only really showing up in slower 1% lows, but again, that's only a 3 FPS difference, so not a big deal. When it comes to Microsoft Flight Simulator, that's pretty interesting. As you probably expect by now, the spread isn't super massive. It's only 6% top to bottom and under 10 FPS, but it seems like frequency is pretty good. Although the 6000 CL36 kit just hit the sweet spot, reliably outperforming the rest, at least by 1 to 2 FPS on each run. In the grand scheme of things, this doesn't seem to matter too much what kit you get, uh, considering the CU DIM is right up there, but I mean, running at the right balance does seem to be at least a little bit important. As for Rainbow Six Siege, which now uses Vulcan by default, it's a really tight race. There's only 2.5% between the top and bottom, with the clock driver DIM coming in last, but only by around 10 FPS, which again, when you're talking about 400 FPS average, isn't exactly significant. It seems like even for Siege, your RAM kit really doesn't matter that much. Hitman 3's built-in benchmarks let me split out the CPU and GPU data, and of course this is the CPU data you're seeing here. As expected, the balance of frequency and timings makes the biggest difference here, as the CU DIM kit is 8.1% behind the 6400 CL38 kit, which is a more hefty chunk of performance missing. You're looking at a touch over 200 FPS and 97 uh, FPS in the 1% lows, compared to 186 FPS on average and 88 in the 1% lows and actually a pretty decent little jump from 6000 to 6400, even with the looser timings on the 6400 profile, meaning, at least for Hitman 3 anyway, you get the best performance with a high speed and still relatively low latency kit. As for Starfield, that one was incredibly close, with 6400, 6000 and 5600 all being ostensibly the same result, and only the CU DIM kit running a tiny bit behind. It's 4.2% slower than the 6400 run, or 6 FPS on average and 4 FPS slower than the 1% lows. There really isn't much in it, and it seems that at least for running around New Atlantis, as long as you get a reasonable kit of RAM, you won't be seeing much of a difference. As you might expect, the CPU in general doesn't have that much, or at least the biggest effect on gaming performance, so swapping out RAM kits to make your CPU a bit faster won't give you tens of percent performance shifts. But the fact that we saw even anything close to that in games is definitely interesting. There isn't much in it between faster speeds and lower latency. Just 1.1% across the you know all of the games on average between the 6400 CL38 and 6000 CL36. So at least at the sort of non-warranty voiding speeds anyway, you're looking at very little difference there. When you start going to slower speeds, you might be trading off a little bit more performance, and especially compared to the CU DIM kit with its very loose timings, that's where you're going to be generally seeing at least a little less performance, regardless of the matching high frequency. So if you are buying Arrow Lake, any high-ish speed and low latency kit is a pretty good choice. Of course, I'm sure you've been inundated with Arrow Lake videos today as of the, the launch, so feel free to let me know what you think of them in the comments. Of course, the memory testing that I've been doing, but the chips in general, let me know in the comments down below what you're thinking. If you want to see more videos, which I do have another one comparing these, uh, this chip in particular to uh, the 7800X 3D, the 9700X, and the 14700K coming up, do hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. Check, feel free to check out plenty of other videos and end cards, including the CU DIM Explain video and the Arrow Lakes of Explain videos 
if you haven't seen them already. And otherwise, that's kind of it. If you want to support the channel and keep me making these videos, then feel free to check out the links in the description, including to my own open source hardware tools. And otherwise, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next video.